scuba with the bubbles and the snorkel and the mask and the suit and the air and all that stuff well no not quite but this is a Philips Magnavox scuba virtual immersion visor uh, play with N64 Saturn PlayStation personal computers with NTSC output will require use of VGA to NTSC converter if not available. Okay. Well, that certainly uh, clears things up a little bit. And we'll just take a look at the side on this special discount offer on VGA to NTSC converter available for scuba customer. Uh, please see details inside. Well, I'm going to say that might not be there after 20 plus years. And uh, just like the same stuff there. Oh, let's take a look at the back. They definitely have some info on the back of this unit. Try to get it centered up there for you. Uh, goes anywhere you want to play. Has a comfortable design with quick and easy setup. Gives you the option to play your own musical selection with full volume control. Is fully adjustable for brightness and contrast. Is intended to withstand extended punishing play. Will accommodate next generation upgrades. Well, I doubt that it's going to accept HDMI, but nevertheless, uh, here we go. Uh, www.scubafx.com. I guess Philips didn't make these for too terribly long. It is a model V, I, V, or V1, V100. Um, those look the same to me. So V, I, V, I, 0, 0. I'm not sure. Don't kid yourself. Video graphics are getting better. Games are getting more advanced, but the experience hasn't changed. What will give you the edge a better sounding experience? Oh, that's a question. What will give you the edge a better gaming experience? Sorry, I said sounding. Philip Scuba, don't just play. Take part in the adventure. Put it on. Okay, so um, yeah, that's what's supposedly going to be in the box. Uh... Let's go ahead and try to get this baby open just a tad. And it appears that it may have all the original paperwork. Doubtful there's going to be a schematic since uh, they don't really show you anything and they don't believe in right to repair. Um, just 1,756,328 different languages. Do not pull the cord. Uh, uh, okay, well, that's the instructions and then uh, warranty card. So make sure you send this back. It is time dated material. Please open promptly. Uh, yeah, you can go ahead and register it with that. And yeah, okay. Uh, do it within 10 days. I'm, I'm sure it's only up to like eight days on this thing. So I think it'll be okay. And what is this? AI Tech Vision for Multimedia in Fremont, California. Well, seriously doubt that they're around right now. Uh, experience big screen gaming, AI Tech and Scuba. Uh, dude, seriously, you don't know what AI is. Copyright 1997. All right, well, there's a couple of things over here. Uh, there's a wall wart. Oh, look at that big iron core transformer. Uh, DC 9 volts, 350 milliamps. And it says 3.15 VA. That's normally on an AC signal, not a DC signal. Input 120, 60 hertz, 7 watts. Hopefully it is in focus on that. So there is the wall wart, at least. And then I think this is going to be the converter. Does it mention anything? Complies with part 15 of the SEC. It must accept harmful interference and it may not cause harmful interference. Oh, there is a volume. <laughs> I thought that was a micro SD for a minute. Not back then. Off timed and on switches on the side of the unit and then the money shot 
there it is. Okay, well, there it is. Um, renewed. Oh, this is a refurb. Oh, that was just laying in the bottom of the box. Renewed. That means somebody had a problem, they sent it back. Somebody checked it, goes, yep, everything is fine. So the customer really wants me just to open this thing up and see if there are any caps and if they might be in need of replacement. So this thing just very bulky VR mounts on your head with some Velcro straps to tighten it up. A uh, couple of headphones and the foam is definitely getting very, very uh, gooey. Wow, that side feels good, but this side is hard as a rock. Well, unfortunately, I don't think I can actually put this up to the camera and have you look inside of it. But, what is, oh, this must be a focus of some type. But I'm going to go and power this thing up. I'll put a uh, NTSC signal into it and um, I'll strap it up there and hopefully it does not take me to another dimension. One moment. Okay, well, I do have it uh, actually plugged in and turned on at the moment. And uh, let's just see if you can see anything up here. Because I do have a VCR connected to it. Uh, where'd the screen go? There it is. And I did see just a moment ago, when I was prepping to do this shot. There it is. So it shows channel... Two. Very hard to hold this thing freaking still. Anyhow, it does have like a little LCD screen up in there. Yeah, there you go. Channel two. Um, okay, let's put this back down and turn the lights back on. So it does have a little LCD screen in here. And I know the customer mentioned something about being extremely careful getting the eyepiece out of here which there is no uh, width adjustment on this unit, which definitely saddens me because if, you're, uh, if your eyes are closer or farther away than average, I guess, average, uh, this thing is not going to work for you. Well, let's go ahead and uh, I'm going to stop this, get some screws out, and we'll come back in a moment. Well, I did get the two halves to amicably separate. So let's go ahead and zoom on in on the viewer board right here and see if we can see absolutely anything worthy of note. Uh, yeah, a bunch of little pots. Not quite sure what they're doing. Brightness, contrast, color level. Uh, that looks like a Sanyo or a Sony. And I do believe that it does say Sony on it. I can't. Yes, yeah, Sony. Okay. Uh, HC-123A, not sure what that is actually doing, probably a little op-amp of some type. 2360D, and then these are basically all of the capacitors that the customer would like to have checked. Luckily, the LCD screen does unplug right there, and uh, there's a Color Burst Crystal 3.579545 which rounds up to 3.58. And uh, a regular on it, a regulator on a heat sink. Uh, I can't quite make out what it is. Let's get some uh, flashing light option. Uh, KA7805, well that's just a five volt linear voltage regulator. Similar to a uh, LM7805 or a UA7805. Zero 05. Well, I'm going to go ahead and unplug everything and get this board out. I'll mark all the capacitors in red and I'll try to make a roadmap of the values and then, um, well, get the ESR meter out and test him and see if he actually wants to move forward with capacitor replacement on this portion. Remember, uh, as I'm unplugging everything from this, there is. this box that is the converter. So I'm betting there's gonna be some caps in here as well, along with some fuzz on the back of it. Yep, 
Fuzz fuzz. Okay, so let's start by removing the board from the viewer portion and testing all of the caps. One moment. Well, after a few minutes of repairing my test probes, because one of them freaking broke off, uh, we can use the ESR meter again. Uh, there's that screw. So I went ahead and attached a couple of basically uh, higher quality banana plugs to the end of this. Let's power this on. I want to see 0 0.09 or 0 0.1. And oh wow, look at that, 0.07 is what I'm seeing. So we'll reset that. Let's check some capacitors. First, a one at 50, 4.3. That's not too bad for a one. A 10 at 16, 2.5, a little higher than I'd like to see, but on, oh yeah, look at the size of that cap. It's a very small capacitor. So yeah, four and a half ohms, not that bad. A couple of 47s at 16, 0.6, I'm great with 0.6. 1.3, I'd like to see 0.6. This is a one at 50, 4.8, not too bad for a one, 4.3. These are all ones, by the way, 4.3 and 4.3. 47 at 16, 0.33, I'm excellent with that. And then this is the other 47, 0.94, not too terribly bad, but not 0.33. This is a 3.3 in the middle here. 0.9 ohms, that's perfectly fine. And let's see, the last one, was that the 47? Oh yeah, sorry, that was the 47. And uh, I've got my roadmap kind of mixed up here. I believe this is a 33, 0.61. I am good with that. This is a 100.9. I'd like to see a hair lower than 0.9. This is a 220, and I get 0.73. I'd like to see a hair lower. That's on the voltage regulator circuit. Another 100, 0.78. I'd like to see 0.5. And another 100 at 0.85. Once again, I'd like to see 0.5 on those. Uh, hopefully you're still in view here. This is a 47 at 25.7. That's okay for a 47. And this is a 47 also, 0.78 and 0.75. Uh, let's see, what did I miss? I may have gotten this one already. That's a 10 at 16 with 2.2 ohms ESR. Did I miss one here? So that should be a 33 at 6 and another 33 at 6 with 0.7 ohms. I'm okay with that. I'm pretty happy with the majority of these capacitors, especially in this kind of a circuit. I don't think any of these are high ESR for basically an analog circuit. If it was a switch mode power supply, on a couple of these, I would like to see a little bit lower value, but I think these are going to be okay. If the customer wants to pay me probably an hour of labor plus the price of the capacitors, I would go ahead and replace them for him. All right, um, let's go ahead and rip open the converter and look and see what is inside that unit. Maybe it's just a pass-through device. Okay, so I did go ahead and re-ESR every capacitor on this board. I did miss that one right there. I didn't have it marked. And then these are the findings. So, one at 50 at 4.2, a 10 at 2.3, 47s at 0.6 and 1.2 ohms. I did not put the ohm signal there. Um, these are all ones, so a 4.6 and three 4.2s. 47s at 16, 0.31 and 0.91, 33 at 0 0.6, 3.3 at 2.8, and a couple of more 33s at 0.31 and 0.31, a 10 at 2.2, some 47s at 25 at 0 0.73, 0 0.76, and 0 0.75 ohms, 
Uh, these are all 100s at 16, 0 0.94, 0 0.90, 0 0.89, and 0 0.86 ohms. A 220 at 10 at 0.76 ohms. And a couple of 47s at 25 at 0.79 and 0.81 ohms. And, uh, oh yeah, that's the 100.86. Uh, so as far as I can tell, every capacitor on this board passes my test for ESR. Once again, it's not a switch mode power supply. I don't need to see 0.05 ohms on a 100 microfarad cap or 0.02 ohms on a 220. So, uh, happy with the results. I'm gonna pass the findings on to my customer and if he wants these 25 capacitors changed, I will get them either ordered or I do have them in stock and we will move forward with this portion. Stay tuned for disassembly of the converter box, I guess you would call it, because uh, there's no model numbers or anything on this unit. Okay, I've got all the screws out of it, and it's starting to separate right now. And, oh yeah, I'm going to say that is not a pass-through device with an IC chip in here. Is that an audio amplifier with the heat sink in the center? I'm not sure. Um... Let's just move the on off switch and the part that goes to the jacks. And then this is the cover for the volume control. And yeah, there's a lot going on in here. It's not just simply a pass through device. TA7769F is in Frank. I'm just wondering, is that a uh, audio amplifier? And then an AN6780 right there. I don't know if you can see that or not. Um, yeah, typical of a lot of, I would say, late, mid to late 80s designs. Oh, look at that AN6780 printed on the board. And I am not seeing uh, a print for that TA7769P. But yeah, lots going on. So I'm going to go ahead and draw a diagram of this board. And we will ESR all of these capacitors as well. One moment. All right, so I have marked all of the capacitors on the what I call the interface board right here. So let's get the ESR meter out and we'll go ahead and test all of these capacitors and see what they may have to say. Okay, starting with some tens at 50. 0 0.99, 1 1.1, and 0.9798. This is a 47 at 25, 0.76. This is a 330 at 16, 0 0.40, 0 0.39. And this is a 220 at 25, 0 0.40. So this is a 220 at 25, 0.39. This is a 10 at 50 at 0 0.94. A 100 at 25 at 0.89. And I believe this is a 47 at 50 at 0.94. So these are 40, excuse me, 4.7s at 50 volts, 0.97 and 0.93. These are both 1s at 50, 2.2 and 2.3. Did I get these down here? A 100 at 25 at 0.87 and a 4.7 at 50 volts at 0.94 ohms. Well, once again, pretty happy with all of those values. So here's my little roadmap that I made for this unit. And I did go ahead and re-ESR every capacitor. At least I think I did. I might have missed a couple here and there. I, ex I ex apologize for the brightness being a little bit too high. But 
1.1 ohms, 0 0.97, 0 0.97 on the 10s at 50, 0 0.76 on a 47 at 25, 0 0.40 on a 220 at 25, 0.39 on a 330 at 16. And, uh, oh, I missed those. Let's recap these. 220 at 25, 0 0.39 and 0 0.44. 47 at 50 at 0.95, a 100 at 25 at 0.89 ohms, and a 10 at 50 at 0.95 ohms. A couple more caps over here, 4.7s at 0.95 ohms and 0.98 ohms, they're both at 50 volts. And a couple of ones over here, 2.2 and 2.2 .2 ohms, they're both at 50 volts. Uh, one moment, let me populate this chart. And we're back. I did turn down the brightness slightly. So 125 at 0.87 ohms and a 4.7 at 50 at 0.96 ohms. I see absolutely nothing wrong with this board as well. Um, I'll flip it over and show you my top side view. So if you ever have one of these you need to recap, there are the values and the negative marks are the black marks on the paper, all pointing that way. So anyhow, there are the cap values, and then there are the ESR readings off of this unit. So I'm going to say this does not need a recap. I will certainly recap this board as well as this board if the customer wants to move forward with the repair but I'm estimating probably two hours of labor plus the price of the parts at this point to recap both of these boards. Well, if there is gonna be a part two, I will let you know. Everyone, thank you for watching. You can follow me on social media, Facebook, Instagram, or X, as Twitter used to be known, at NorCal715. You can email me, norcal715videos at gmail.com. As of right now, trying to get caught up on this stuff, if you want to contact me, go ahead and leave me a comment in one of the videos. Uh, the Gmail is not the best way to reach me at this moment in time. Remember, with your help, we can try to keep these things out of the landfill, out of the recycle bin, and out of the e-waste facility. I'm going to put this thing kind of in limbo and I'll wait till my customer gets back to me and see what he wants to do. Everyone, thank you for making it to the end of this video. I really, really appreciate it. Everyone, have a great day. Once again, thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye. And just in case you want to recap one of these units and you don't want to have to do the legwork, there are the capacitor values and the number of capacitors used on this board, which is the LCD driver board right there. And then here is a list on the interface board, which goes that way, right there. So there you go. If you want to recap one of these units yourself, there is a basically a bill of materials. All right. Thanks for watching. Once again, have a great day. Bye-bye.